we have Alberto Sanino um, from Facebook's Novi talking about Narwhal and Tusk, a DAG-based mempool and efficient B BFT consensus. So I'll let you take it from here. So my name is Alberto Sanino, um, and this work is about Narwhal and Tusk. So I'm trying to give you a brief overview. It's a 15 minute overview, uh, but feel free to ask questions uh, since the paper is probably going to take longer than that to explain. So this is joint work with these people. So George, Lefteris, uh, and Sasha. And the work has been done while all the authors were at uh, Facebook Novi. So I'm skipping all the introductions about uh, blockchains, why they're cool, why we need them, and so on and so forth. I guess by now everybody knows them. Um, just to say here, we work on a permission setting. So that's classical uh, Byzantine quorums. So what is all about? So this talk is just about how to build really high performance blockchains. So we've been trying that for a long time, with different techniques, and um, we believe we have one that works uh, fairly well. So here is the beginning of the story, right? We had those consensus protocols for a long time, and either that you look at early versions of TMBFT, previously Libra PFT, hot stuff or tender means, um, we realized that they're all big monotholic protocols that share transaction data as part of the consensus protocol. And then we have a 30 years um, literature that uh, tells us how to minimize the overall message complexity of the consensus protocol itself. And so this is probably um, one of the key problems that we have for scalability today. So here is a, a traditional a leader based protocol. So we have a leader that typically makes a proposal, it makes a block, broadcasts it to all the other replicas, gathers some votes into a certificate, and then rebroadcasts back the certificates. Something like that. Um, potentially, uh, they don't use a leader for aggregator, but the general story is the same. And when we look at the resource utilizations of all those machines, we realize that when a node is selected as leader, it's the bottleneck. It uses a lot of um, its uh, storage, CPU, bandwidth, and over, all the resources it has, while the other replicas are brutally underutilized. Um, anyway, the leader rotates because it's a blockchain, and so it means that all machines need to be over provisions, uh, while only one of them at every single time uses the full capacity of the machine. But not what we want. What we want is to see the graph there, where it's read everywhere. Every machine needs to be utilized at its maximum capacity all the time. And so after um, a lot of digging, we uh, realized that the mempool is actually the key in all of this. That reaching consensus on metadata, if those are small, it's actually very cheap. And message complexity does not really matter a lot for consensus. Again, if the mempool already did the bulk of the work and shipped all the data around. So here it's about separating the data propagation, which is, will be the role of the mempool, from reaching consensus of metadata, which will be the role of the consensus protocol. So first of all, narwhal. So that's the mempool. I'm going after to uh, explain you how we take that narwhal, the mempool, and build a consensus protocol on top of it or actually add any consensus protocol on top of it. So here is the mempool. Um, it works uh, like that. So nothing complicated at the beginning. We have the client's transaction on the left and the novel um, uh, mempool, which um, runs on every single node. So the mempool is composed of a number of um, entities. The workers, we have n workers, and the primary, one primary per mempool. So I have that question a lot. So don't look too much for the trust relationship between those workers and the primary. If it's easy, just assume that um, all the process, each worker is a process on the same machine as the primary. So all a single machine, um, imagine them like that. And so it's a single guy, a single trust authority that operates a single node. Then we can actually say, well, that node operator actually can own multiple machines, again, under its own authority. And then you can have one worker per machine if you, if you like. So this does not change at all the, the trust model and the trend model of the Byzantine quorum. So what happens is the client submits the transactions to the workers. Through some kind of load balancing, each worker receives different transactions from the client. 
Here is where we can apply techniques from your VFT or others. Uh, these are completely orthogonal. Every worker receives its transactions and add them into batches. And each worker broadcasts the batch to all other worker to, to the worker um, of all other nodes. So to take an example, worker one gets transaction from a client, makes a batch, and now broadcasts the batch to all other workers number one of all other nodes. Worker number two makes its own batch and sends the batch to all workers number two of all other nodes. But so no, worker one is not going to send any message to worker uh, number two, for instance. Um, so you'll see a little bit how these will enable uh, the scalability of the system. So in addition to composing those batches, every worker hash the batch as well and sends the digest to the primary. So these are very small, like uh, 32 bytes. The primary is the process or a dedicated machines that receives from a lot of workers very small amount of data. And what it does with that, it runs the mempool protocol. So what's the mempool protocol, right? I'm going to explain it now. Just keep in mind, the mempool protocol, protocol is per se lightweight in the sense that it only operates on metadata. It's a block header that embeds all the, all the digests that it got so far. That block header, uh, well, the very first at least, will link to three uh, to 12 plus one Genesis blocks. It broadcasts the header to all primary machines of all other nodes and gathers some votes. The voting rule is fairly easy. It's just that um, you vote for a header if it's the first header you see from a, validate, uh, from a validator for a specific round number. Then the, um, the validator just aggregates all the votes into a certificate and rebroadcast back the certificate. So that's a very common pattern. Um, so the next block would not link to the genesis, of course. It would just link to 12 plus 1 certificates of the previous round. So that would build a structured round. These, what you see on the graph here, we consider it round 1. And uh, for, for those who are into, into more of those things, you realize that if we do that a lot of time, we eventually achieve some um, Byzantine consistent broadcast. Um, well, actually, reliable broadcast, sorry. So every node does that in parallel, right? So um, here, I removed all the links uh, except for uh, node 1 uh, for clarity on the, on the graph, but every node does the same thing. Uh, round one is all the things that I showed before. Round two, similar, but it links to 12 plus one uh, certificates of uh, round one. And so we have that deck. So that's what the mempool gives you. That's what it outputs to the consensus layer. So now we have that. We have a structured mempool, and let's see what we can do with that to have a consensus protocol. I'm first going to present task, which is a zero message asynchronous consensus protocol. What we mean by zero message is that we just look at the DAG and we interpret it to derive a total order of transactions. So the consensus engine will not send any message at all. So here it's how it works. It just interprets the DAG. So let's assume that we have the DAG like that. Right, so round one happened, then round two, and now we're about to reach um, around round three. So we already saw as a node two of plus one messages of round three. So first, small modification: we include um, a share of random coin every um, every odd round, so that every odd round we can actually open and look a random coin. So once the threshold of the random coin is two of plus one, so we arrive at round three. We have then um, with 12 plus one uh, certificates for round three, right enough shares to compute the coin, and we use it to elect a leader of from R minus two. So now that we have the common coin, we can see well who was the leader of round one. Um, the leader of round one was L1, the one you see on the screen there. And now we ask ourselves the second question, which is how much support does that leader have? So what support means? It means how many nodes from round two linked to the leader. Here we see on the picture that it's only one. What we want is actually F plus one support for a leader. If not, we say just leader has not enough support and we just continue. We don't do anything. So already there it's pretty nice because we do not have view change, although a leader is considered to have failed um, according to some definitions of fail, right? 
So uh, like to go on, the DAG continue to grow. For instance, uh, we may have some gaps in the DAG that happens, it's not a big problem. And now we're at round five. So round five, it's an odd number again. So we can open the new common coin. We open the new common coin that um, tells us who's the leader of round three. So it's L2. Same thing as before, we look what's the support for the leader L2. Let's just look at round four and check how many blocks of round four actually linked to that leader. Now it's cool, we have F plus one support, F plus one nodes linked to that leader, and now we can commit. So that is the commit for now. How does it work? Well, we look at leader two, the one that we just found has enough support, and we check if, it has, if it's linked through the bag to any previous leader. Well, here you see on the graph, well, it's linked to L1, the leader of L1. So now what we do, we first commit L1 and then commit L2. So that's very important. We need to be a little bit recursive. We go back and we start from the earliest leader, we commit the leader, and then we advance until we commit the leader L2. So what does committing a leader mean? Well, committing a leader means committing all its sub deck. So for instance, when we say we manage to commit L2, it actually means that we commit all the green blocks there, whatever it's linked by L2. So whenever we manage to get a leader with enough support, we actually commit a gigantic number of transactions at once. And um, so that was the task consensus protocol. If you follow that, uh, it's actually really that simple. There is very little more, uh, more than that. Um, so this is task on top of Narval, but in fact, we can also have other consensus protocols on top of the Narval mempool. So what do we do? We try to have a hot stuff running on top of Narval. We just replace the mempool and we have the traditional hot stuff consensus protocol running on metadata provided by the mempool. We just have one slight modification to the commit rule. Well, it's every time that we uh, commit, uh, that hot stuff commits uh, a certificate, um, that we use as payloads, well, we can commit the whole sub deck. It's just we order the certificates and then they're causally linked. So there is no problem in just uh, ordering deterministically. And so we see that the mempool grows asynchronously. And whenever hot stuff managed to commit whatever um, its payload, well, we commit um, everything that follows. So you can see when hot stuff uh, gets a, a payload, we contain, we contain C1 and C2. The blue blocks are committed. The yellow one are uh, next, and then when hot stuff commits a block that contains C3, well, all the green ones are committed as well. So we implemented that um, and tried to see how the real thing works. We wrote that in Rust. So everything is open source. Um, we use Tokyo for networking, RoxDB for storage, and Dalek for cryptography. So this is not quite production ready, but we believe it's quite close to a production ready system. And we're still working to, to improve that. So we took an experimental setup like the following. We take five data centers as far as we can um, in the world, and we put um, an equal amount of machines, uh, equal amount of node on every data center. So here is um, the happy path, the throughput latency graph. Um, for just for the sake of time, forget about uh, the orange line. Uh, the baseline hot stuff is the red one. What happens if we just take hot stuff as it is? And we run it in the same condition, so it ban, uh, ban testbed, not the one that you may see on other papers that are actually in the data center, and uh, compared on the same condition, same transaction size um, to the rest of the protocols. The Narval over task is just the same hot stuff protocol, but just using Narval as a mempool, and task is the protocol I explained before. You can see that actually on those conditions, TAS managed to have 150,000 transactions per second. So again, these are geo-replicated experiments uh, with about three seconds latency. So that's about 20x above the state of the art for asynchronous consensus protocols. I have one more minute. So what about scalability? What happens if now we take a worker um, and we, we have every worker on different machines and we increase the number of workers? Um, so you can see that the protocol scales linearly very well. Here it's a setup with four nodes, and we take uh, one, four, seven, and ten workers, and we look at the throughput latency graph. If you look at the one on the right, the, 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 line, the, the straight line, you see that we get about half a million transactions per second uh, with 10, uh, 10 workers. 
Uh, again, the latency does not suffer much at all. Actually, it's still three seconds for test and still about two seconds for a uh, hot start. And um, that's it. So uh, in conclusion, is separating consensus and the data dissemination is what enables high performance on, um, on these blockchain designs. Um, and egalitarian resource utilizations was actually key. So we all use all our machines as much as we can. The workers are the heavy, um, heavy beast. Everything else is quite light and operates on metadata. Um, that's why we scale and uh, link to the paper, link to the code. Let me know if you have any other questions.